Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Tuesday, November 7th, 2023. I'm your host for today, Andrew Leahy, a tax and technology attorney from New Jersey. In today's episode, we have Trump's fraud trial going Trumpish, Google versus Epic Games, Novo Nordisk says Ozempic side effects are well known, and the University of California seeks to test the waters of an undocumented student hiring policy. Let's ask ourselves how it is 2023 only has 54 days remaining when January 1st was just like last week and read today's legal news. On this day in legal history, November 7th, 2000, the U.S. presidential election resulted in a statistical tie between Democrat Al Gore and Republican George W. Bush, leading to a bitter legal dispute that was eventually settled by the U.S. Supreme Court on December 12th. On this day in the year 2000, the fabric of American democracy was stretched in a test of its resilience as the U.S. presidential election concluded in a remarkable dead heat. Democrat Al Gore and Republican George W. Bush found themselves embroiled in a contentious battle for the White House, with the outcome hinging on the results in Florida. The controversy centered on a razor-thin margin and irregularities in ballot design, leading to widespread confusion and a recount in Florida. The ensuing legal battle escalated quickly, with both camps deploying legal teams to argue their cases. The matter ascended to the highest court in the land, drawing the Supreme Court into a political fray that was both unprecedented and contentious. In a decision that still sparks debate, the court ruled in Bush v. Gore to halt the Florida recount, effectively awarding the presidency to Bush. The court held that the Florida Supreme Court scheme for recounting ballots was unconstitutional. The majority found two main issues. First, the varying standards for evaluating ballots in different counties violated the Equal Protection Clause. Second, the method for recounting ballots was not consistent with the state's commitment to the rule of law as it lacked uniform guidelines. Thus, the court effectively halted the recount, which meant that Florida's electoral votes were awarded to George W. Bush, securing his election to the presidency. The decision was controversial and remains a pivotal moment in American election law. In the immediate wake of the decision, the ruling was met with polarized reactions, underscoring the partisan divide and raising questions about electoral processes and judicial intervention. The ramifications of this legal dispute reverberated beyond the courtroom, prompting changes in voting technology and procedures and leaving an indelible mark on the psyche of the American electorate. This case remains a touchstone in legal and political studies, a stark reminder of the delicate balance between law and democracy. In a courtroom setting that often mirrored the intensity of a political rally, Donald Trump's testimony in his New York civil fraud trial transformed the legal proceedings into a de facto public spectacle. Judge Arthur N. Gorin, steering the proceedings, was compelled to remind Trump's counsel that the courtroom was not the place for political oration. N. Gorin's patience has been previously tested, leading to fines against Trump for contemptuous behavior. The trial is centered on allegations by New York Attorney General Letitia James that Trump inflated his net worth for financial gain. Trump's responses on the stand were circuitous and politically charged, eliciting Angoran's stern attempts to elicit succinct answers. This legal confrontation is a significant deviation from Angoran's quieter legal career, marked by his straightforward rulings against oversized developments in Manhattan, even if later overturned on appeal. And Gorin's ruling in September, bluntly stating the presence of fraud in Trump's financial statements, sets a grave tone for the trial's continuation. The consequences of this trial are profound, potentially imposing a $250 million penalty on Trump and restricting his New York real estate dealings. Trump's defiance, juxtaposed within Gorin's legal rigor, encapsulates a critical juncture where law and politics intersect, with national attention fixated on the outcome. This trial, a mix of legal scrutiny and political theater, reflects the contentious nature of Trump's ongoing public life, both in business and politics. A pivotal jury trial began between Epic Games and Google, questioning the Play Store's practices, with Epic alleging Google's policies stifle innovation and inflate prices. Epic, having faced a setback in a similar case against Apple, is now seeking an injunction against Google's app distribution monopoly. Google counters by accusing Epic of contractual breaches and exploiting Google's platform without due compensation. The trial unfolds amid Google's separate antitrust battles over its search and digital ads dominance. As the legal saga continues, previous settlements with other companies loom in the background, reflecting a broader scrutiny of Google's market influence. Novo Nordisk is contesting a lawsuit by a Louisiana woman who claims she wasn't warned about the side effects of Ozempic, a diabetes drug. The company asserts that the side effects, including vomiting and pain due to gastroparesis, are well documented and recognized on the drug's label. The lawsuit reflects growing legal scrutiny over diabetes medications, which have gained popularity for their weight loss benefits. Both Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly, facing similar lawsuits, maintain that the alleged side effects are known and disclosed, challenging the claims made in court. The outcome of these cases could influence pharmaceutical labeling and consumer rights. California is venturing into new legal territory with its initiative to hire undocumented students within its higher education system, specifically the University of California campuses. 
This bold move is a direct response to a campaign by student activists who argue that the 1986 federal law prohibiting the employment of undocumented individuals does not apply to state agencies. The UC regents have set themselves a deadline of November 30th to finalize their hiring policy, which could potentially serve as a model for other states. This initiative is not without potential legal hurdles as it relies on a novel interpretation of the law that has not been judicially tested. Legal experts supporting the initiative contend that the federal law's hiring restrictions must explicitly mention state entities to be applicable to them, and since they do not, states like California could proceed with their plans. If successful, the University of California could become the first public institution to openly hire undocumented students and staff, potentially influencing immigration and employment policies nationwide. And with that, I thank you so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you look up more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all the topics touched on today are in the show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, you can find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Andrew and my co-host Gina is at Gina. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and do not represent those of any organization we may be affiliated with. Nothing here should be construed as legal advice because it is explicitly and certainly not legal advice. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment, you can leave a rating or review on your podcast player. We'd sure appreciate it. And if you know someone that might be interested in a story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is available at minimumcomp.com and wherever you get your finely crafted podcasts. If you haven't checked out the website in a while, give it a look. There are complete transcripts and resources for each episode and its corresponding segments, as well as an opportunity to receive new episodes in email newsletter form. All of the links to stories we cover will also be available at links.esq.social, which is our link aggregator in the Fediverse. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, it's never too early to begin thinking about your Thanksgiving menu. 